Political historian here, Dr. Amachi. Listen. Based on history, I believe that we are likely to see a disaster on his part. In the 1992 Constitution, we witnessed Dr. Yakubu base break away from NPP to form a party called United Ghana Movement, and it didn't work out well for him. And then the National Reform Party, NPP, that is. Dr. Park, we see in June, also broke away to form the PPP, and it didn't work out for him. So all that we are seeing is that these traditional parties I have mentioned have at one point or the other experienced one of their leading members leaving to form some other group, but they never work. Or it's not going to be a loss to the NDC or any other party. It will be a loss to the MPP. As a political historian, the Willem Evans Incom is our man in the Ashanti region, is the head of Bureau for the Northern Sector. He joins me on phone line now. Bill, thank you very much indeed for your time. The New Patriotic Party has a stronghold as the Ashanti region where you are domiciled. Now, tell us what reactions you've been picking from uh, some party stalwarts and, in fact, the indigents of the area. What they make of Alan Germantin's walk away from his mother party, the NPP? Well, Johnny, so it has been a chorus of public indignation. And in the midst of that, there is some level of apprehension because they believe that with what is happening to the party, it is pointing the party to the wrong direction. And uh, it is even making it very difficult for the party to break the age for the very first time under the current political or democratic dispensation. And they are pointing accusing fingers at the current handlers of the party, saying that they are not doing their best at all. Now, does this come as a surprise to the NPP in the Ashanti region? In fact, that was where Alan had the, a Drew so walk. It was a big, big, big walk that Everybody thought, well, the Ashanti region had fallen for Alan. That did not show in the special delegates conference that was held to choose five out of the ten uh, from which one would have been chosen to represent the party in the 2024 elections. But did they see this coming? Well, so they, 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 some believe that it was bound to happen because, um, like Alan consistently was saying, that the system had a scheme just to ensure that he doesn't win or lead the party. And it is something that convinced the majority of his supporters. If you're talking about Alan's base, then you are looking at the grassroots. The more reason why, I mean, proud to the 26th Special Delegate Congress, I mean, some of his communicators said, and even him said, that he was not looking at, I mean, uh, giving a good show I mean, in that particular contest, but at least to be part of the five. And then he was banking his hopes in November 4, where he was convinced that majority of the people, his I mean, main constituency, which is the grassroots, or at the grassroots level, I'm talking about the police station executives and electoral area coordinators, will give him that mandate. But unfortunately, he could not finish the race. But I can tell you that there are some influential people in the Ashanti region, for instance, chiefs, who have always supported Alan to go solo. Because, look, uh, 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 Johnny, right. mm. currently, it does appear that the whole narrative is going beyond Alan Baumia contest. And the fact that Alan did not like how to him was being handled by the leadership of the party or some influential element within or figures within the ruling NPP. Some are saying that it transcends. They are saying that now it does appear that the party is being taken away from the Ashanti region. And that is making it more, I mean, uh, uh, I mean the more reason why we are seeing some founding members like SK Buafo and all of that 
I mean, taking part in Alan's new movement. And I can tell you, three, two weeks ago, when Alan had wanted to announce, I mean, I mean, what he did announce yesterday, he was also going to talk about the fact that he, has, he was leaving the party. And he was here in the Asante region. I can, co I can confidently tell you that he, three weeks ago he was here in the Asante region before that announcement, prior to that announcement, which was booched. Right. Which, which was actually booched. So this whole plan of going independent started in the Ashanti region. And I am saying this without a shred of doubt, that there are some influential chiefs in the Ashanti region who trade their roots to the UP who are in full support of Alan Kodio Chamatin because they believe that the party is being snatched away from them. Is the party in the region, the Ashanti region, worried that this could affect their electoral fortunes in the 2024 elections? Well, absolutely, because before Alan's departure, they were looking at two things. One, history. History, I mean, for the fact that under the current democratic dispensation, none of the two political parties who have dominated our multi-party democracy space gone beyond eight years. But 2024, even though paint, I mean, a different picture, that whoever wins breaks a certain level of jinx, being it uh, John Dramani Mahama or Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. But then for the MPP, the level of confidence that they had was the fact that for John Dramani Mahama, they know how to win over him. And of course, mm -hmm. when Dr. Mahmoud Baumia was touring the Ashanti region, mm -hmm. he convinced the people that he has their magic wand to win over, I mean, John Dramani Mahama on any day. Little did they know that there's going to be a fracture, a fracture in the shape of Adam Kodio Chiamantin leaving the party. Because when you engage them, then they take you down history, I mean, lane. Saying that, even back to the days of UGCC, which was, which was supposed to have, have been, been the first political party to have even won, I mean, indigenous political party to have been won power post-colonial period. It didn't happen because there was a fracture when Nkrumah mm. moved out and, of course, out of it, U UP also emerged. Right. Then fast forward to the 1970s, Victor Owusu and then William Uforiata and then that of Nana Dodan Kwe Kufa mm. then episode. Right. And I'm right. sure, Johnny, you are aware. I'm very much aware so of that. They are saying that when it comes to this history, it put the party not only in a bad limelight, but it also affects the party's fortunes. And that's more reason why they believe that 2024 will be very extremely difficult for the MPP, whoever, in, in, in irrespective of whoever leaves the party, it will be difficult for the MPP because Adam Kodou Chimati is not only leaving the party, but he's leaving the party with other disgruntled members of the ruling New Patriotic Party, especially in mm. the Ashanti region. Hold, the the hold your horses there, Evans. Let's connect with... Uh Poster Ben Epson is also the managing editor of the Daily Dispatch newspaper. Uh, Uncle Ben, thank you very much for your time. Good morning. How are you? Uh, good morning. Good morning to our listeners. Great. I'm looking at the 7th uh, September version of your paper. And on the front page, it says, Alan's best option is to run as an independent presidential candidate. That's Ben Epson. Uh, before that, and ahead of the uh, special delegates conference of the NPP, you had also said... On, on, on the, I think on page two and also on the front page of, of your paper, page four, and on the front page of your paper, that Baumia was going to come first, Kennedy Japan second, and Alan third. It does appear that history is smiling on you and your polls, yes? You see, um, in internal elections, you have to be known. Alan's greatest political mistake in 2007 was not going into parliament. A year, I'm finishing my seventh book on Ghanaian election. And I had realized that Alan not going to parliament was going to affect him seriously. Alan's being Alan Cash, Alan's popularity peaked in 2007. Kennedy Japan has been an MP for more than 22, 23 years. He's within the party, he speaks in parliament, he goes to conferences, people in the party know him. 
when Alan talked, complained about the problems his people were having, the party decided that they were going to address it. Now, Alan's performance in the superdelegates was poorer than I thought. The superdelegates was kind of made up of people in their 40s and 50s, party chairmen, mm. uh, elderly people in the party, and so on. Mm -hmm. So his performance meant that on November 4th, with over 200,000 delegates voting, it was going to be a distant head. And that, my personal view, is what put Alan to opt out, to avoid that disgrace of a possible distant head on November 4th. I see. Now, Bill, let me let me come to you. I've just seen a, a memo purported to have come from the Ashanti Regional Chairman of the party, the MPP, dated a Monday, the 25th of uh, September 2023. It says, all constituency chairmen in the Ashanti region, uh, removal of Alan Chamantin's branded items from our party offices in view of Honorable Alan Chamantin's resignation from the party, all his posters, banners, flyers, and paraphernalia at our party offices in all the constituencies must be removed with immediate effect once he has forfeited his membership it is just right and fair that these items are removed from our offices thank you very much for your understanding and usual cooperation signed by mr bernard in Triboisiaco, regional chairman uh, bill can you confirm this indeed for us well at 100 percent i can confirm to you that already that exercise has already begun and um, we've seen pictures and of course videos of um alan uh, pictures of sorry posters uh, being removed from some constituency offices of the ruling New Patriotic Party. It's a very simple message to them, out of mm. mind, out of sight. Now, Uncle Ben, let me come to you. Does Mr. Chiamatis stand a chance of winning the 2024 elections beyond the NDC and the NPP, knowing full well that in the Fourth Republic, there's been the Guzitano example, there's been the Dr. Reku Brobe example, there's been the Parkwesi Indum example. Does he stand a chance? At all. At all. Never. I mean, he's, that is the end of his political career. He's 58 now. That is the end. If I were his advisor, I would have said that Alan don't contest. Offer to support Baumia. And Baumia will have no choice but to keep you as running mate. Whoever advised him, He's, have, he's having four political advisors. And Johnny, I can tell you something. In mm -hmm. 2007, right. I was a member of Alan Chiamatin's media team when he was come contesting against Akufuago. Mm -hmm. I told him that I had, in the presence of other members of the team, that if you want to have a future in MPP politics, go to parliament or court for get it. That was 15 years ago. You, before you become a candidate, mm -hmm. you will have to be elected. Right. But you don't know what happened. Nothing. Mrs. Wallace was killed. Apart from being the wife of the founder of, now throughout since our fourth republic, the only person who could have made a huge impact, people, if they are gone independent, Rollins and Kofi Annan, finished. Finished. So I wish him luck. I, I will have to delay my book for a few weeks to find out Alan Chiamatin's impact. But given the fact that even his own party got accepted, if he gets 1%, I'll be very, very, very surprised. 1%? Yes. I'll be very surprised. But he has waded into the Occupy Julobi House uh, demonstrations. He tweeted about it yesterday. And it does appear that all those who are right in the middle, who are not happy with both the NDC and the MPP, may just tilt in his favor. Or? You see, those who 
my analysis of the 2020 elections is that, uh, Johnny, we have about 30% who are seen voters. Those who went for that demonstration, would they vote for somebody who is not likely to win, to win their vote? 40 months is a long time in politics. In the year's time, God will, when we speak, I'll give you indicators. But if you had gone through that demonstration, will you vote for somebody who you know will not win? Will you want to waste your vote? William, let me ask you this. How, how is the picture in the Ashanti region regarding Alan's chances of, of winning the 2024 elections? You've heard Mr. Ben Epson that he's looking yeah. into the crystal ball. He will be yeah. surprised if Mr. Chamantin gets 1%. And that he doesn't stand a chance giving the benefit of historical lessons. What do you All see right. in the Ashanti region? Okay, so in the Ashanti region, there's a region that not too long ago I was, I was, I was saying this and people that laughter. Even in terms of democracy, it's still conservative. The understanding of democracy here is different from that of Accra. Uh, it's still a conservative environment and people respect the elders. So what makes this one tricky for the NPP, especially being the stronghold of the party, is the people who are supporting Alan Kodio Chamatin in clandestine. And I've mentioned to you that there are some influential chiefs who are spearheading this particular agenda. Alan did not take this particular decision in isolation. He did that together, then take it from us. He did that together with some influential chiefs in the region. And they have been for instance, last, uh, last Friday around 10 p.m., I was one with them, and that gave me indication. The reason I was so bold to come out on the platform and say that Alan, was, uh, Alan will be announcing um, that he's departing from the MPP, or, I mean, splinting from the MPP. That particular mm -hmm. information came from one of those influential chiefs. I see. Put them aside, in the mm -hmm. open, mm -hmm. somebody like S.K. Buafo, Right. Who is very influential in NPP politics as a founding member in the Ashanti region. Of course, mm -hmm. SK Buafu leads every political figure who is coming from the NPP and want to visit the Santa mm -hmm. He leads them to perform all the welcoming rites and all of that before the king receives whoever is um, in coming to visit him. And he, yesterday we saw him at the function. And there are other people as well. So um, the more reason why when you engage some of the people here, mm -hmm. having cited these people ar around Kodu, Alan Kodu Chamantin, gives them indication or it's an indicative that his position, and of course, the fact that he wants to contest his, the party that bears his political career will be a major threat to the ruling party. Not to say that he's going to gather much of the votes in the Ashanti region. But even if he gets a fraction of it, it means a lot to the ruling New Patriotic Party. Uh, the 2020 nominal figures. Bill, I thank you very much indeed for your time. William Evazinkum is our Bureau Chief for the Northern Sector. He's also in the Ashanti region and has been sharing some perspectives with us on the Ashanti region. Uncle Ben, you have the final word on this one. Um, so now you, you just burst the, the balloon and the bubble of those who are solidly behind Alan Chamanti. Already we've seen some of the MPs who, uh, you know, went to follow him, saying that, well, he is now on his own because their interest is first of all the party. Would you say that Mr. Chamanti is following his personal interest against the interest of the corporate body NPP that we have always known him to be part of? Well, let me give uh, your listeners the superdelegates who are mainly elderly people in the party. How much Alan Chamartin got in Ashanti? Alan got 10. Kennedy a Japan, 6. Afriya Kutu, 5. Baumia, 97. That gives you an idea. The superdelegate are not the rank and file. The superdelegates are elderly people, party chairmen, founding members, executives. 
These are not people who are 30 years, 30 years old who don't remember Alan Martin. They know Alan Martin. Let me repeat the super delegates vote mm. in Ashanti. Mm. Can I do the point? Six. Alan Martin, 10. Afriya Kutu, 5. Baumia, 97. A word to do with me is enough. If Alan has strength in NBC, he will have beaten Baumia here. I see. Yes. Ms. Epson, we thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. Ben Epson is the managing editor of the Daily Dispatch. And uh, just so you know, he predicted that Alan will go solo on the 7th of September. And here we are. Alan Chermanting has gone solo on his political party, the New Patriotic Party. And uh, he says that the party has been hijacked. He's not able to recognize.